Sports Update, I'm Trey Rooks alongside Jordan Litwiller. Before we bring you today's coverage, a quick recap of last week's games, starting with women's basketball. Men's and women's basketball played their final home. Proved a 6-1 and one on the season and will take on Barry Tuesday night and Tampa over the weekend. That will be all from our studio show in, at Pembroke, and I'm Trey Rooks. And I'm Jordan Litwiller. Enjoy the game. Good evening, Go ladies Sam. and gentlemen, and welcome to Palm Beach Atlantic University, the Rinker Athletic Campus, and J.M. Jake Rubin Park for tonight's Sunshine State Conference matchup between the visiting University of Tampa Spartans and your sailfish of Palm Beach Atlantic University. Let's meet today's starting lineups. First for the Spartans. Leading off in center field, number eight, Jordan Lala. Batting second, playing second base, number two, Drew Earhart. Batting third, the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Urso. Batting fourth, the third baseman, number nine, Anthony Nunez. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 14, Santiago Garavito. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number 25, E.J. Dosco. Batting sixth, the first baseman, the right fielder, number 19, E.J. Cumbo. Batting eighth, the left fielder, number 10, Nico Saladino. And batting ninth and catching, number 27, Danny Kutcher. Pitching for the Spartans, number four, Michael Paul. Tampa's head coach, Joe Urso, assisted by Sam Militello, Jose Jimenez, Andrew Amaro, Scott McNulty, and Mark Johnson. And now let's meet your sailfish of Palm Beach Atlantic University. The leading off, designated hitter, number 11, Maddie Warren. Batting second. The second baseman, number 27, Elias Machado. Batting third, the center fielder, number 33, Matt Ferranda. Batting fourth, first baseman, number five, Giovanni Lorenzo. Batting fifth, the shortstop, number 24, Mikey Casaleggio. 
Batting sixth, third baseman, number 16, Pedro Figueroa. Batting seventh and catching, number 21, Nate Housen. Batting eighth, the right fielder, number 23, Dre Lopez. Batting ninth, the left fielder, number six, Jeremy Texel. Pitching for the sailfish, number four, Dan Beebe. Palm Beach Atlantic head coach is Kent Bonfield, who is assisted by Bo McMillan and Jack Palma. At this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the pregame prayer, followed by the playing of our national anthem. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful weather tonight for this game. And we just pray your hands of protection over this series this weekend. And just pray that all things done here be glorifying to you. And we love you, Lord. Amen. Yep, good. Hello and welcome to the Sailfish Sports Network. My name is Caleb Dean, joined by Will Church tonight as my color analyst. Tampa comes into town earlier than usual this season. First conference series for the Sailfish, starting off against the Tampa Spartans. Spartans ranked number one in the SSC, 16 out of the last 17 season. They are a force to be reckoned with. The key tonight is going to be pitching for the Sailfish. Will, what have you got on Palm Beach Atlantic starter Dan Beebe? Well, uh, he's gonna, starting off really good. He's got a career ERA of about .69. He's played 13 innings. He's got 17 strikeouts, and he's ranked as the top uh, pitcher in the SSC. He also just recently won the SSC pitch. Out. They have Elias Machado out at second base. He's got, got very good hands out there, great on the defensive end. He's also batting 750 so far, which technically le leads the SSC. He doesn't have enough at-bats to qualify for leadership, but he will get there. Um, Matty Warren, who left the last home game with a injury, is back in the lineup tonight, DHing. And it's going to be Jordan Lala leading off center fielder for Tampa. Will, Tampa is the fourth ranked team in leading all of Division II baseball. Their Jordan offense, Lala. quite remarkable. What can you tell us about Tampa's offense? 
Well, uh, currently Tampa's offense right now is looking, pr uh, looking pretty good. They are ranked, as you said, number one in pitching and hitting, but they also uh, are not top that ranked in fielding. They actually outrank the, f the Sailfish by at least one. They are the fourth of the third rank, excuse me, third rank in fielding with a PBA Sailfish falling just behind uh, in fourth place as a pop fly there. And it's going to be secured. Casaleggio, one pitch, one out for Dan Beebe. That's lovely to see for him. Now batting number two, Drew Beebe, Earhart. 13 innings under his belt. Looking to get it done against one of the best teams in all of Division Two. First conference series, Sailfish opening a five-game homestand. Showing bunt in the box, that's Eckerd. Second baseman for Tampa in the right-handed batter's box. And that one comes well inside. Dan Beebe, 17 strikeouts on the year. Michael Paul will be his opposition for Tampa. Much higher ERA for Michael Paul, so Sailfish throwing out their best starter in the first game of this series. Two and one is the count, one down, top of the first. And that one's ripped down third baseline. That's gonna stay fair, gonna look like extra bases off the bat of Earhart, and it will be a two base hit for the number two hitter for Tampa. Just scalded down the line there, Will, nothing you can really do. Number 11, J.D. Urso. And the, as we said, that the PBA is, is behind Tampa when it comes to fielding, and fielding is gonna be real crucial in those real short um, line drives. Absolutely. Palm Beach Atlantic has made some stark improvements this year on the fielding end. Not as many errors committed so far in the season, but it's still a young season. And that one evades the outside corner from BB. I do apologize, folks. A uh, little bit congested tonight, so not my normal voice, but hopefully you can deal with it. Earhart out on second base. And 2-0, and BB missing off the outside part of the plate. BB only four walks so far through 13 innings. And that one finds the outside corner. Beautiful pitch there from BB, strong and true. It's Urso in the box, son of head coach Joe Urso. And that one bends on the inside corner, evens the count at two and two. BB never gets ahead of himself, always keeps his wits about him, and he's fought it back here. Two and two is your count, one down. And that one comes way inside on Urso. Three and two full count now. And obviously with those full counts comes the obvious, um, I can't think of the right word, but obviously the choice of a walk, which has been a very struggle for PBA as, as walks have been fairly common. So I'm guaranteed that uh, PBA head coach Kent Bottenfield's thinking about that right now. Absolutely. Urso gets a piece of that one, fouls it back. Last game against Barry was Tuesday for Palm Beach Atlantic. They lost in a total of one to five. And starter Devin Blair did not escape the first inning, so Dan Beebe looking to escape the first inning. But that one's lofted out towards center, falling fast. Who's gonna get there? It's gonna be right fielder Lopez. New 
area for him to be patrolling. A little bit of shake up on the field. It's usually Matt Ferranda out in right field. But Matt Ferranda takes over in center with the previously injured Matty Warren. He used to play center field, but he's gonna be DHing today. Take some strain off of those legs. And then out in left field, Jeremy Texel, crucial part of last year's Sailfish squad, getting the start out there, his first one of the year. Two down now, BB. Still got a runner out there on second base. Nunez standing in now, third baseman for the Spartans. And that one slapped down to third, corralled by Figueroa down there. Strong throw across, and the side is retired. Palm Beach Atlantic coming to bat in the bottom of the first. This is the Sailfish Sports Network. That's what it means to be a PBA student athlete. See, definitely capable of getting some stuff done here. So, Michael Paul going to have to tread lightly. And Matty Warren uncharacteristically batting DH tonight. But as we mentioned, he was injured a couple games ago. And he'll stand in there as DH. And he slaps that one well foul, attacking the first pitch. That ball went a long way. Matty Warren, 5'8", but don't you second guess his strength. That man can squat over 500 pounds. And he takes a strike in the zone, 0-2. Matty Warren over 600 on base percentage right now. And he attacks that one, hits it down towards third. That's gonna get past, could, could be extra bases. Steaming around first, heading towards second. Sliding in safely is Matty Warren. Lead off double and the Sailfish are fired up on the bench. Will, we just saw a similar hit like that in, from Tampa in the top of the first. Absolutely, and this is again where that fielding is gonna come in. With them being right next to each other, I'm expecting a real competitive field game. Elias. Absolutely, this is about as competitive as it gets. First conference series of the season for both teams. And now it's Elias Machado standing in the box. Freshman getting the start out at second base. Switch hitter. Batting from the left side here against the right-hander, Paul. And that one's hit foul. I thought that one was going to loop over the third baseman, but it is foul ball. Machado referenced by Coach Bottenfield as one of his most adept fielders. 
across the board. And that one call on the inside pitch that's quickly 0-2 on Machado. He's immediately in protect mode here. And that one sits outside. Good eye from Machado. Machado, a teammate of Matt Ferrandez at King's Academy before he came here to Palm Beach Atlantic. The freshman, Ferranda, a sophomore. And that one's fouled straight back. Heads up, Cade on camera two. Man in scoring position, that's Matty Warren. One and two is your count. Nobody down, bottom of the first. And swing and a miss on the outside pitch. Machado will resume his seat in the dugout. And now Matt Ferranda stepping in. Previously mentioned staple Sergio of this sailfish team. Graduate of Kings Academy, batting 297. And the breaking ball loops in there for strike one. Will, you'll notice the pitcher working very quickly here, wasting no time in between pitches, Paul. And that could definitely be a factor as to why the, the amount of balls he's throwing tonight. He definitely has the capability to throw strike after strike, so it really is just up to him on how he plays it tonight. Absolutely, and that also could catch some hitters off guard if they're not ready for the expedited pace. Absolutely, you always have to be ready when, you're, when the pitcher is about to throw the ball. And Ferranda swings and misses at the low pitch. That's a good pitch. Tailing away from the left-handed batter. It's hard for righties to get that kind of movement away from a left-handed batter, but we're seeing it here out of the hand of Paul. And Ferranda taps one foul. 297 on the year for Matt Ferranda. He has found his home in the number three hole for the Sailfish, where we will expect him to remain. And called strike three, much to the dismay of Ferranda, but definitely to the reassurance of Paul. Absolutely, that's a huge confidence boost. Paints the inside corner, sets down one of the most lethal hitters on the Sailfish. But here comes another powerful hitter in Gio Lorenzo. Lorenzo playing first base tonight. Figueroa was the starting first baseman for the beginning of the season, but they had to switch things around with Matty Warren going into the DH spot. Some confusion out there on the mound. And that one sits outside. He was definitely taken aback by Marty Warren there. Attempt what looked like he was going to steal. Two and zero oh is the count. Two down here, bottom of the first. And good inside pitch. Gets the called strike. And that one sits low, great eye from Lorenzo. Three and one hitters count. Advantage Lorenzo here. And he smacks it out towards center. Will it get down? It will not. Charging in is Jordan Lala to put it away. So we go to the top of the second. Scoreless on both sides. We'll be right back. of Tampa.
explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. I don't just want to know. I want to see, feel, experience for myself. I know I have what it takes to make an impact. Resilience, drive. I chose a school that shows what a beautiful life, a beautiful faith, a beautiful community looks like. Because we were chosen for this. Beautiful weather here in West Palm Beach, 80 degrees at game time, sun going down, creating a nice little pink wisp out in the distant sky by the horizon. But here is the focus, Palm Beach Atlantic Baseball at Jake Rubin Park. Both teams scoreless through one, Garavito in the box, and that one sails and hits the bat. Oh, it hits the back of Garavito. I thought I heard the bat get hit by the ball, but I guess not. From the looks of things, it hit him in the arm. It looked like he was bundling his arm there a little bit as he walked to first. Yeah, I mean, of course you would rather be hit by the pitch than have it, have it be a foul ball off of the bat. That would be very unfortunate, but regardless, first pitch of this inning goes awry for Dan Beebe. Let's see if he can bring things back under control. And that one's popped up shallow. Machado calling and catching for the first out. Number 19, EJ. Combo. Gotta love those easy pop flies that you know you can catch it and give it out. Absolutely, and with Machado, you got no worries about him dropping the ball out there. That kid has got ice in his veins when it comes to defense. in the left-handed batter's box. Big power hitter towards the bottom of the order here for Tampa. We watched this kid do some damage last time. And that one sits outside. And that one gets the call. BB finds the outside corner. Three and one count for Combo. And that one. Foul ball over to the left side, looks like. fought off, hopefully not directly into the windshield of my car. And that one's roped through the hole, base hit for Combo. Garavito pulls Left in at second base, so everyone moves up a base. 
Tampa, with how good their offense is, they're going to be threatening nearly every inning. It's just going to be on the sailfish to put them away, deny them every single time. Saladino in the box, laying down a bunt. Beautiful one off towards the left side. Well played by Figueroa to secure the out at first, but now two men in scoring position. Number 27, Danny Pitcher. And Gutcher now. Tried to make that quick out there. He, does, he obviously does not want number 14 to score. First offering from BB just misses outside. This is going to be a absolute grind of a series for the Sailfish, taking on the number four team in the country in crucial conference matchups. Here, every game you can scratch against one of these top or top teams will benefit you in the long run. Sailfish trying to make their impact felt in the SSC. And that's a beautiful breaking ball. Fell off a table there. Finds the zone one and two. One and two, two down, top of the second. And that's a called strike three. Dan Beebe does it again. Gets out of a jam and he'll take his seat back in the dugout. Sailfish going to work here in the bottom of the second. your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa.
mind the south region. That's definitely giving PBA an opportunity to do something big if they pull out a victory tonight. Yes, it could continue the momentum that they've been building in the early season. And that one's launched way up in the twilight out towards left field and settling under it and making the catch. That is Saladino. So another scoreless top of the or bottom of the frame. We're going to the top of the third at Jake Rubin Park. I don't wanna know, no, no. For a busy day of college football, let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Mm. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Every sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Pitch of the game. He may be looking to turn that around this time around. And BB comes with the heat right down the middle. Says strike one. Tampa, five national championships in the past 20 years. Coach Joe Urso quoted as the most accomplished coach in all of college baseball. His Tampa squad 913 wins to 268 losses under Joe Urso's helm. Ken Bonfield, meanwhile, looking to assert the Sailfish as a threat within the SSC who got absolutely no respect on the preseason poll. And that one's ripped out towards shortstop right where Elias Machado patrols for the first out. So a hard hit first Number out. Two, Drew Earhart. And now Earhart steps in. Showing bunt. Crashing in at the corners are Lorenzo and Figueroa, but doesn't decide to lay it, lay it down and instead takes outside for ball one. Not showing bunt this time and takes the high heat outside. Erhard doubled down the third baseline his first time. You can see Figueroa position to defend against that this time. Way ahead, way ahead. 
That one navigates its way around the strike zone, so 3-0 and is your count. And that one right in the zone at the letters from BB. Works it back to a three and one hitters count here. And that one's hit out towards center. Matt Ferenda started back, but now coming in, calling off everyone else, and he'll take it himself for the second out. Number 11, J.D. Urso. J.D. Urso stands in now. Ooh, takes, takes it right in the back. Second one of those we've seen from BB. Third baseman, number nine. So, two out Nunez. base runner. Nunez, cleanup hitter in the box. Looking to make something happen here with two outs. BB deals outside, gets the call. Beautiful pitch. Lovely spot. <laughs> Anthony Nunez, 6'2 sophomore lefty. And that one back in the same spot, so BB not reluctant to paint the outside corner, gets two quick strikes. He's one away from getting out of his third inning of work. And that one's hit down a third, booted by Figueroa. He might have time to turn and throw, and he got him. Beautiful. Way to stay with it by Figueroa down at third base. Turns and throws, gets the out. Sailfish coming to bat, bottom of the third. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Selfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Selfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Welcome back to West Palm Beach, Florida. Lopez digs in. Eight, nine, and one do up in the order for the Sailfish. Looking to string some hits together. Score a couple runs in this bottom of the third. Feels like only a matter of time until 
Tampa Spartans are able to scratch one across. Lopez launches one out towards left field, started back, not edging back on the track, and he dropped the ball. Lopez digging around second, heading for third, and he'll be in there. Left fielder, left fielder Saladino loses the ball in the twilight. I was so confused what I was witnessing, but he lost the ball and then found it and then had to make his way back to the warning track. And that ball hit off the glove, so it definitely could go in the books as an error. We'll see how they score it. And it will be an error in the books, allowing Lopez to reach third. And now, Texel standing in, takes it outside. A blessing for the Sailfish as they have a man on third base to start this inning. And Texel lines it past the shortstop. The Sailfish are gonna scratch first here. Lopez trots across the plate and Texel notches himself an RBI. And we're just getting started here, folks. Beautiful piece of hitting from Texel. Making his presence felt on his return to the lineup. Still nobody out. Matty Warren, already one for one on the day. Attacks the first pitch, hits it out towards right field, should be playable, and is. That's Combo, puts it away out in right field for the first out. But Sailfish coming into this inning, swinging the bats. Definitely being aggressive at the plate tonight. This specific inning coming out swinging, and stuff is happening. Now Machado, he attacks first pitch, could be two though. Back to the pitcher and the turn. I believe that's a 1 4 3 double play, folks and Tampa escapes the inning, only allows one run. We'll be back in the top of the fourth. Welcome back to the Sailfish Sports Network. My name is Caleb Dean. Sailfish jump out to a one-run lead here against Tampa. BB gonna have to keep putting in solid work from the mound. in the dirt for ball one. On Tuesday, Palm Beach Atlantic squared off against Barry down in Miami Shores. And that one's bounced down towards Figueroa. He gobbles it up and throws across. Wide throw, but Lorenzo stays on the bag. Anyway, Tuesday, 
in Barry. It was kind of First a bullpen game for Ken Bottenfield's squad. He used eight different pitchers, partially enabled by the fact that Devin Blair didn't go more than two innings. And it appears that the plan was for everyone to go one inning, full bullpen game on Tuesday, get everyone some reps. And that one's popped way up in the air. Will it be playable? Lorenzo coming over for a look right by the dugout, and it's in the dugout. Heads up over there, Sailfish. Lorenzo, this is the first time we've seen him in the field at home. Was the DH for the Sailfish in all their previous home games. Doskow in the box, takes strike two. And that one sits well outside from BB. Only one strikeout for BB so far. That means he's been pitching to contact, but so far no damage done, only two hits allowed. And that one doesn't get the call on the outside corner. Home plate umpire asking for help down at first base from his field umpire, but Doskow did not go around. Two and two is the count, one down top of the fourth. Three and two full count now. Dan Beebe not wanting to lose this man to a walk. And that one comes inside, hit down the line. That could be extra bases down into the corner. And it will be, it'll be a double. Sliding in at second safely is Doskow. Number 19, DJ Cumbo. Third two base hit of this game from both squads. All of them have ended up down in that left field corner. Now Combo fouls that one off onto the softball field. Sun has set here in West Palm Beach. And that one sits inside, fastball from BB, primarily, primarily a fastball pitcher, but he'll throw in the wrinkle every so often, come with a breaking ball. He is very effective at both. BB, back on the rubber, steps off again. Now Kent Bottenfield coming out, he wants to have a conversation. Clarification of the rules, various rules have changed this year in Division II play. Bonfield. Not seemingly very happy. One and one, one down, top of the fourth. And that one's tapped over towards the right side. That'll go foul. 
one two advantage for BB. Much different looking game here for BB compared to the one that he pitched, which earned him pitcher of the week in the Sunshine State Conference. And that was fouled off. BB in the contest against Washburn gave up zero runs, five hits, but struck out 10. Only one strikeout so far in this one. And he is in danger once again. Man in scoring position with one down. And that one sails outside. BB has been an expert at navigating out of jams. He's got another one to contend with here. Machado shading up the middle. And that one's hit wild towards the left side. Texel giving chase down in the corner. It's gonna be down four extra bases. Tampa's gonna tie up the game here at least. And it will be a double and an RBI for Combo. Launch that one down, going oppo. And Tampa knots the game at one. Nothing you can really do there as a pitcher. That's just a great, great hit there from Combo. Take a look at the replay. Combo hits it where it's pitched. Drives it about 420 feet. One hops against the wall. Texel tries to barehand it down in the corner and that might have cost him some precious seconds getting the ball in. But regardless, it is now 1-1. And another man in scoring position. That one's fought off the left side. Saladino in the box now. His error resulted in Palm Beach Atlantic's one run. So looking to balance that out with some offense of his own. And that one's hit down towards first base. Should be playable. Lorenzo grabs it, takes it to the bag. Two down. Now we have a man scoring for him once again. Man, just 90 feet away down at third base. Tampa Bay had the out to spare and they, they spared it. They played that, played brilliantly, allowing the man to get onto third base and he's now in scoring position. TV, uh, Tampa Bay is definitely in the spot to take the lead here in this game. Even Saladino grounding out to first is what we would call a productive out, moving the man over to third. And now, it's on Dan Beebe to once again work out of this jam, limit the damage. And 2-0. And oh. That one's fouled back. Catcher in the box for Tampa, number nine batter. And that one's hit out towards right center. Heading back on is Lopez, gets there and makes the play. Beautifully done out there, Lopez patrolling the outfield with expertise and we'll be back, bottom of the four is Sailfish looking to strike back. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. The biggest message today is don't change. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. 
Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Absolutely. Bottom of the fourth getting underway here. We got Ferranda stepping in the box. Oh for one on the day for Ferranda. Leaves that one outside. Ferranda rarely takes a walk. Very aggressive hitter. Rather get it done with the bat than allow his fate to be dictated by the pitcher. And that one finds center, center in the zone for strike one. And Ferranda loses the bat. the bat. And grounds out to first base. Quite a sequence there. Hopefully everyone in the dugout is okay. First baseman. Don't see that ever. Absolutely not. Most of the time, when a player loses the bat, it's because they swung so hard and missed the ball. He hit that ball and was prepared to run. Yeah, he didn't care where the bat ended up. But anyway, one down. Paul still moving at a blistering pace. And Lorenzo fouls that one off. and takes that one low and outside. The pitch clock is a feature that has been added to Major League Baseball this year. However, not added at the D2 level yet. And Lorenzo takes low, but the pace of Paul out here on the mound looks like he's working against the pitch clock. Only about 10 seconds in between pitches. And that one's blooped He's over the third baseman and into foul ground. He's gonna make the play. Paul definitely trying to keep the PBA offense on edge tonight with his short sure. rounds in between pitches. And so far they have seemed on edge. Nunez putting away the foul pop up down there at third base. And now Casaleggio will take his second stab at Paul. And that one's hit way out of here, but foul. Man, oh man, Casaleggio could have straightened that thing out. Selfish would have regained their lead, but it is not to be. And he takes that one high, very borderline pitch there, good take. Fouls that one off his leg. One and two is the count. <laughs> Palm Beach Atlantic currently second in the SSC in doubles. And Casaleggio goes down swinging, so the sailfish are turned aside again here in the bottom of the fourth. We're tied up at one apiece.
honored on Clematis Street in West Palm Beach. Center fielder number eight, Jordan Lala. During Clematis by night. Coming up in just a couple weekends. And we're back to the top once again for Lala. He's taking his third look at BB and takes a swing and a miss at the first offering. BB 62 pitches. We'll see how far Coach Bottenfield opts to go with him. After the bullpen game on Tuesday, everyone should be adequately rested. And Lala gets a piece of it, fouls it back to the screen. One and two is the count. And two and two now. This series is gonna be a massive test for Palm Beach Atlantic and where they stand. It's been hard to gauge when they play non-conference opponents, but they looked good in the early season. Started off with, I believe, a five-game winning streak. In that is absolutely correct. And then they lost one to Young Harris, who was number 28 in all of Division II. And now they're squaring off against the number four team. And it's still very early in this game, but Paul Michelinic definitely hanging around in this one through five. And even if they lose, if they hold their ground tonight and they prove themselves, I think that they can definitely make a stance whether or not they win tonight. Absolutely, and I talked to Ben Green, member of the Sailfish, over the weekend, and he said that the Tuesday game, they lacked energy. Oh, wow, Scalder right back to Dan Beebe, pop of the glove. And BB says, look what I found. Throws it around the infield for the first out. Number two, Drew Earhart. Take a look at it. That ball, 112 miles per hour off the bat into the glove of Dan BB. Finds a little pearl in there, tosses it around the infield. That was just pure reaction from Dan Beebe fielding his position. Give him the gold glove now, folks. Now Eckhard in the box. 2-0 is the count. And that was fouled off the end of the bat towards the sailfish dugout. Erhard, native of Tampa, many of these players native of Tampa. And that one sits outside. Dan Beebe, graduate student out of Berlin, New Jersey. New Jersey well represented on this Sailfish squad as well as in the booth. And that one sits inside, called strike three. BB, another notch in his belt. Retires Erhard here for Number the second 11, out. BB definitely got to be feeling some sort of confidence after that strikeout. He's still got it five innings in. Looking superbly confident out there on the mound. Straight face, ready to get back to work. Brings it home, high and outside. This inning has been all about Dan Beebe so far. And that one's hit out towards left field. That one's deep, it's high, it's at the wall, and it's caught. Texel has enough room on the track Keeps it in the yard. Dan Beebe 
escapes once again. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Let's see what the Sailfish can do. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. The biggest message today is don't change. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division II, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Welcome back to the Rinker Athletic Campus. My name is Caleb Dean alongside Will Church. We're locked in a 1-1 battle here. Number four, Tampa, coming to town, take on Palm Beach Atlantic. It's been quite the history that Tampa has had against Palm Beach Atlantic. Will, what can you tell us about their matchups in the past? I mean, absolutely. I mean, PBA's last win came in 2019. I mean, think of that. Uh, three years ago, um, Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay has been picked first in the preseason poll for the 16th time in the last 17 polls. And then here's a, and then PBA only has about six wins in program history against Tampa compared to 32 losses. That you got to think of the big numbers there. Tampa, obviously a well-known school for their baseball program. They have had 101 MLB draft picks there. So obviously a, a lot of MLB teams will be looking at this team this year. Right now, we're looking at Figueroa hitting one towards the middle. Fielded, 4-3, put out. Earhart gets it done out there. As Will mentioned, 101 draft picks have come out of this Tampa organization. Seven of them have signed major league contracts. See if we can pull up some specifics about those players very shortly, but right now, Paul still going to work on the mound. That's crazy, by the way. That's a crazy call. Nate Housen in the box now. Not sure how I missed him his first time around, but Housen batting 400 on the year. Also has one of the two Sailfish home runs on the year. Other one off the bat of Sal Grinstead, who is inactive this weekend. Frank Rampin got the start over Grinstead on Tuesday. And that one's tapped foul. We'll do it again at one and two. Nate Housen, an extremely versatile player, plays the outfield, catches, and can play the infield as well. Also, a significant power bat and stolen base threat. He's a multi-tool player. And he hits that one foul. Counts days two and two. That was a line shot over the dugout. And called third strike on the outside corner. Strike three to Housen, so quickly two down. Selfish. Not looking likely to score in this bottom of the fifth, but Low piece will be their last chance. Absolutely, and his fast pace has led to a very quick 
game here so far. We're about an hour and 10 minutes into this one. Paul definitely trying to keep the, the selfish on edge with his quick pitches tonight. And Lopez pops it up, should be playable in foul ground. And the catch made, catcher Guther gets there. And we're going to the top of the sixth. Be right back with you on the Selfish Sports Network. Champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Back to the Sailfish Sports Network. Dan Beebe about to enter his sixth inning of work. 77 pitches. This could be his last inning. Some action over in the Sailfish bullpen. Looks like Chenoweth warming up over there. See if he'll come into play after this inning or in this inning if Dan Beebe gets into trouble. But Dan Beebe usually gets into trouble and then usually gets out of it. So we'll just see how this top of the inning plays Third out. Third baseman number nine, Anthony Nunez. Four, five, and six due up for the Spartans here. And that one's fouled off. BB has been placing his pitches extremely effectively. As you can see, a lot of those Tapper foul balls in on the hands of the Spartans. And that one's ripped out towards Machado at second base. He gobbles it up and quick throw across to Lorenzo. 4-3 put out to start the top of the sixth. PBA definitely making sure their defense is on point tonight. That was a point that Coach Bottenfield made in his preseason interview that I did with him. He said, the defense is much tighter, much cleaned up from the previous year, a year where the Selfish led the SSC in errors. That's not something you ever want to lead in. And currently, nobody leading this game. We're tied at one and one. Aravito did not go around on that last pitch, so it's 1-0. and And that one right down the middle, foul back. 1-1 one one is now your count. Aravito has been hit by a pitch and grounded out to third base. As the planes fly over here in South Florida. Breaking ball finds the zone. BB loves to focus on his fastball, but every so often he'll come and surprise hitter with that breaking ball. Almost buckled the knees of Garavito there. And it's a one and two. And fouled back, count remains. Tampa with four hits, Palm Beach Atlantic with two. And that one, low and inside, just evades the zone. Two and two now to Garavito. Five men left on base for Tampa tonight. That comes at the hand of Dan Beebe and his effective pitching. And strike three. Dan Beebe 
racking up some strikeouts now, finds his third. Goes back to the outside part. Great alternation of inside and outside pitches. Keeps the hitters off balance. And now Doskow steps in. Last chance for the Spartans in this top of the sixth. And that changeup sits right down the middle. Four strike one. Doskow doubled and scored the only run. And that one comes inside. Barely misses hitting Doskow, I thought it raised his left elbow, but I guess not. Maybe it contacted the bat. No, it didn't. I'm so confused. And that one's fouled off. Two and two is your count. Top of the sixth, Dan Beebe bringing it home. And narrowly misses, strike three called. Blue wouldn't ring him up. Doskow gets a second life. And that one's hit out towards left center field, going back. Right over the Sailfish logo, going back at the wall, and another wall scraping catch made by Texel. Wow, back to back innings. Tampa almost leaves the yard, but Texel's there, gets the glove on it, squeezes it, and we're going to the bottom of the sixth. Score still tied at one. Don't go anywhere, folks. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Selfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. Welcome back, folks. Caleb Dean and Will Church on the call for you tonight. We hope you're having a great evening, no matter where you're tuning in from. Parents, friends, alumni, sailfish, selfish fans, cats, dogs, goldfish, whoever you are, wherever you are, I'm glad you're here. Let's take a look. Wind not blowing as hard as it usually does. This ballpark situated less than two miles from the Atlantic coast here in South Florida. Wind usually blowing in from the east, but well, you can see the flags tonight relatively calm. Do you think that's going to have an impact on fly balls? Absolutely. You know what? You don't. You won't have that wind assist, so it really will depend on how strongly you hit the ball at the plate. And we just saw another wall scraper hit by Tampa. Sometimes, if that wind is blowing from right to left like it usually does, that ball can carry out, but. Not on a night like tonight. Sailfish hanging in by the skin of their teeth. And sometimes the skin of the teeth can be enough to put them over the edge. But they do have to get some offense string together here. Jeremy Texel, the man who just made that catch out in left field and has the RBI on the day for the Sailfish. Looking to get something done. 
Two and one is the count. And that one's hit softly towards center and caught out there by the second baseman, Erhard. So one down. Again, fielding for You can see that easy catch there. Tampa Bay definitely relying on that tonight as well as the sailfish for those catches that we saw at the end. With, as you said, those gate scraping catches there. Absolutely, defense being executed very well by the Sailfish tonight. No errors for them. But the one error that Tampa had cost them the one run. Ball dropped out there in left field. Matty Warren takes a strike at the knees on the inside part of the plate. And that one's lifted out towards center by Matty Warren. Hit pretty well, but should be playable. And it is played and put away by Lala out there in center field. And now, Elias Machado grounded into double play his last time up. Took a strikeout in the first. And swinging first pitch fouls it back. Coach Bottenfield told us that he didn't necessarily know how freshmen would impact the season, but they already have in a remarkable fashion. Machado getting another start out there at second base. And that one curves around the plate from Paul. Two and one. Paul might have some gas left in the tank here. He's only at 67 pitches. He's worked slightly more efficiently than his counterpart, Dan Beebe. And that one's hit out towards left. Very shallow coming in to make the play. Two-handed grab is made by Saladino. So going to the top of the seventh, still nodded at one. University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. so far in this one, entering his seventh inning of work at 91 pitches. Hasn't walked a batter yet, only one earned run on four hits. Three of those hits have been for extra bases, however. You can tell he's definitely confident. He's still giving them a fighting chance every time he goes out there. He's ready to fight to the end tonight. Absolutely, baseball is such a mental game, so when you build on your own momentum, you create yourself a very nice opportunity to do well. And that is exactly what BB's doing. If only his offense could scratch one out here, put him in position to get a win tonight. And quickly just pouring in the strikes is Dan BB. Looks like he never left the mound, still locked in. 
Owen to the count on Combo. Fouled off towards the left side. Combo, two for two tonight, single and a double. RBI attached to that double. Oh and two, strike three, ball not held behind the plate, but quick throw down by Housen, no problem. Strikeout in your book. High fastball from BB. 10, Nico Saladino. Retires combo for the first time tonight. Now Saladino will take another stab at BB. And that one low and inside. And that one's hit out towards where Machado patrols. He gobbles it up, throws it across, and quickly two away here. Dutcher number 27, Danny Dutcher. And now it's left to Gutcher, the catcher. And that one's hit out towards shortstop. Not backhanded by Casaleggio. That's going to be an error. Gutcher thinks about two, but slams on the brakes, heads back to first. So that's going to be the first error of the game. Was it on that note? guy at first base, but that's, once again, that's where the field is crucial. Absolutely. Errors in the field will create unnecessary opportunities. Dan Beebe could be sitting in the dugout right now, but instead he's got to go back to work. Contend with the top of the order now. Jordan Lala, 0 for 3 on the day. And that one sits middle, middle. Four strike one. Action has ceased in the Sailfish bullpen. Looks like this is Dan Beebe's inning. One hundred pitches now for Dan Beebe. And throw over to first. Checks on Gutcher. Catcher not likely to run over there at first base. One and one is your count. And that one's roped over the leaping Elias Machado just off the tip of his glove. Tried to time the leap perfectly. Almost did. See if we can get a replay on that one. Campus not taking any risks tonight. Two, he could have right third if he wanted to, but he made the smart decision to stay on second, and that's definitely going to pay off down the line. Absolutely. Most likely aware of the defensive ability of Machado out there at second base. Chases his chases the ball down, prepared to throw to third. Take a look. Gets on his knees. Gets it back in quickly, not allowing the man to tag up. Erhard in the box now. Had a double in the first, but he's been silent since then. And that one's hit hard, foul. Figueroa wisely playing close to that third baseline. That's where Earhart's double went the first time, right down that third baseline. And Hausen wants a conversation on the mound. Paul Michelinic coming into the night with the 10th ranked pitching staff 
out of 11 teams in the SSC, but they're going toe to toe with the number four team in the country right now. Honestly, after talking to multiple members of the Sailfish roster, getting even one game of this three game set would be huge. Dan Beebe with the pickoff attempt at second base, almost throws it behind Elias Machado, but Machado able to range to his left and not allow that ball to sail into center field. Crucial pitch here coming from Dan Beebe. Sits outside, two and one. Falls behind the hitter. Two men aboard here. And that one's lifted into shallow center. Machado calling and catching, and the Sailfish once again negate all damage. BB putting in a crucial effort on the mound. I can't say it enough, folks. BB is the story right now for the Sailfish, but they got to get their offense going. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Buses, who are Sailfish teams, turn to you for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Welcome back, folks. The top-ranked pitcher in the SSC just escaped another jam in the top of the fifth. That top-ranked pitcher is our very own Dan Beebe. Will, what can you tell us about his stats coming into this game? Yeah, he's definitely holding a strong night for the Sailfish. His ERA is about .69. His whip is 1.15. He currently has uh, 11 hits, one run. 17 strikeouts, and keep in mind this is going into this game, so this is not this is not up to date with this game. But going into this game, he's got 17 strikeouts tonight, um, and that's definitely shown tonight that he's holding strong even into the seventh inning. Absolutely, MVP of this one Sir, so far. Selfish defense as well, holding strong, and now all that there is to be asked is for the Selfish to scratch a couple runs across here. Matt Ferranda stepping in takes the first pitch inside, would not bite. Veranda, the most at-bats of any sailfish so far this year. If he can stay healthy, he's gonna play every single day. And he pops that one into center field, should be playable, and is shortstop, makes the catch. That's Urso out there. Veranda takes a tough 0 for 3 so far on the day. But only two Sailfish have gotten hits. This has been a pitcher's duel through and through. Michael Paul absolutely wanted to tell Dan Beebe that he is not going out. And that one grounded just foul off the bat of Lorenzo off towards the right side. Lorenzo in his usual cleanup position in the order, batting number four. And that one sits high and outside. Lorenzo won't bite. And that one way inside. Sounds like it almost hit him, but apparently not. Two and one. Lorenzo 
native of Fort Myers, Florida, right across the coast, will know something about Fort Myers himself. And that one's ripped foul. Lorenzo looking for his first home run of the year. Takes that one inside. Works the count full. Both pitchers going the distance in this one. Paul with a more manageable pitch count though. Lorenzo attacks, hits it right into the glove of the jumping first baseman, pulls it down. Dosco with the effective timed leap there to retire Lorenzo. That ball could have found its way down into the corner. That could have been trouble. Casa Leggio takes a pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Two strikeouts on the day for Casa Leggio. Showing bunt and pulls it back. It's just a tactic to pull the corner infielders in. Will it work in the selfish's favor? Not bunting this time and takes inside. Casa Leggio has hit some enormous foul balls today, looking to straight one out. And that one in the same spot, but gets called a strike. Two and two to Casa Leggio here. And that one outside, good eye from Casa Leggio. He Swung and miss on that same exact pitch in his last at bat. So, adapting to the situation is Casaleggio. Three and two, two down, bottom of the seventh. And there he goes, chases the outside pitch. And we're going to the top of the eighth. We're still knotted at one here in West Palm Beach. We can stop to make sure someone is okay, get in the way, and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Watching a cow. Oh, what's it doing? Impressions. Start your day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick fil A. Welcome back to the Rinker Athletic Campus, part of Palm Beach Atlantic University. Dan Beebe going out there for his eighth inning of work. He's working with 105 pitches. Will, does it surprise you that he's out there? No, not at all. You can definitely tell he's held this team strong tonight. He looked right at Coach Bonfield and said, Coach, I can keep I can holding this team strong. I can hold this until we score. Absolutely, I agree. He also hasn't pitched in over Shortstop two weeks, 11, so Bonfield making him work some overtime here. But you can definitely tell he is in his zone tonight. He is holding this team strong. Absolutely is in his zone, and the Selfish very much want to win this game. Urso leads things off. Did he go? He did not, says the first base umpire. Standard two umpire crew here at the Division II level. And that one's roped into the glove of Figueroa for the first out. 
We've seen a lot of scalding line drives. Finding the leather tonight on the infield on both sides. Been a pitcher's duel through, through and through. Paul is on pace to throw a complete game. He's got much less pitches than BB does. Crucial that BB got that first out on just two pitches. That increases his longevity. Hoping to get through this entire inning. And that one is bounced foul. One and one, one down. Nunez in the box. Showing bunt and takes a strike. One and two is the count. And that one's fouled off. We'll do it again at one and two. Upcoming schedule for the Sailfish. Three games set with Tampa, two games tomorrow. And swing and a miss, BB retires the coach's son and sends him back to the dugout. BB, his fifth strikeout of the night, he's been pitching to contact, but 14, hey, some Garavito. pitchers make a living by doing that. Take a look. Beautiful spot, high outside corner, no chance for Urso to catch up to it. Two down. 112 pitches now. For BB, just threw his 113th. Sits high and outside, 2-0. and oh. And that one's fouled away, 2-1. and one. That one's roped out into left center. That's gonna get down for an extra base hit. Matt Miranda collects it, overthrows the cutoff man. Machado gets it on the backup. Hits the stanky leg out there at second base and Garavito's gonna find himself a double. That's the fourth double of the night against Dan Beebe. Now Will, if you're Dan Beebe, does a hit like that, does that rattle you? Does that get to you? If a, as a good pitcher as Dan Beebe is, I'd say that yeah, he, that definitely hits him, but he's gonna try to overcome that. He's gonna try to make sure that his next his next throw is a strikeout, that he can get this team back on track. Absolutely. Sometimes it doesn't play out how you predict it to in your mind, but Dan Beebe now facing Doskow, the first baseman, and pours in a strike on his first offering. Popped up, shallow in the outfield, Machado calling and catching, and the Sailfish once again weasel their way out without any damage. That is seven runners stranded for Dan Beebe. We're going to the bottom of the eighth, folks. We'll be right back. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. 
It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. Welcome back, folks. Despite Paul having a significantly lesser pitch count than his counterpart, BB, BB stayed in the game for the eighth inning, and Paul is pulled. So, Coach Joe Urso thinking that Braden Nelson is going to be the better option. The graduate student out of Brexville, Ohio. Will, what do we got on him? His career, his career RA is about 6.48. He's played a total of eight innings so far, and he's struck up 12. So he's got pretty good stats coming to this game. He does have 12.96 strikeouts per nine innings. So he is a force to be reckoned with out there on the mound. Man standing at 6.5, playing in at 2.35. So. It's going to be Figueroa, the first to test him. I don't know, Will, if I'm a selfish hitter and I'm looking at that ERA, I'm licking my chops. Figueroa fouls that one off towards the right. Not going to be playable, just gets out of play. Three Tampa Spartans were giving chase. Sailfish still only with two hits on the day. Figueroa needs to change that narrative. And he takes high and outside. And that one's hit towards the middle. That's gonna get through. For Figueroa, he's got himself a base hit to lead things off in the bottom of the eighth. Sends it right back up the middle. Nelson greeted rudely here. Absolutely, they haven't really had the runners on base tonight. And now they have one. They're hard to come by, so hopefully Nate Housen can take advantage and move things along here. And pick off try over at first. Nelson, very simple motion, pitching from the stretch. Housen showing bunt. Runs. Hard to come by in this game for both teams, so perhaps Coach Bontenfield could use a sacrifice bunt to advance the runner here. Not bunting on the second pitch is Housen and takes a strike instead. Coach Bo McMillan down there at third base, dishing out the signs. Second look over at Figueroa. Nelson almost threw that one into right field. Housen showing bunt again, but that one in the dirt in the opposite batter's box. So falling behind two and one is Nelson. and bunts and fouls it off. So runs the count two and two, not able to get it done with the bunt. Bunt sign almost certainly turned off now with two strikes.
another look at Figueroa. They seem pretty convinced that he's going to run here. He's more aggressive action at throwing it at the play. He's definitely going to make them reconsider trying to steal. And swing and a miss by Housen. Gets the first out on the chase. Housen hangs his head as he retreats to the dugout. Number 23, Dre Lopez. Now Lopez steps in. Lopez on the year, 314 hitter. And stealing second is Figueroa. He could be out. And he is. Tag applied. Just didn't get a good enough jump. Did Figueroa. And that was a big risk right there. He obviously knew it, but he wanted to score, and unfortunately it did not go in the selfish interest. Well, you know what happened there, Will? Take another look at the tag. Yeah, just perfectly placed. No chance for Figueroa, but Bottenfield couldn't advance the runner with the bunt, so he decides to take the risk and send the man to steal the base, but it does not pay off. And now, two outs. Two and one count to Lopez. Joe Urso getting a little bit vocal with the umpire behind the plate, not liking some of the calls. Jeremy Texel on deck, man responsible for knocking in the one run that the Sailfish have. And that one's tapped towards the middle of the diamond, should be playable. Throw across is made, and the Sailfish are turned aside here in the bottom of the eighth. We'll take a quick break, coming back, ninth inning, not at at one. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. Sailfish Sports Network. We've entered the top of the ninth. Knotted one and one. Palm Beach Atlantic turning to Dan Beebe once again to put in the work. This, this, goes, this just goes back to what I was saying earlier. He's definitely in his zone. And I'll admit, I thought as I looked to my right and I saw some activity in the bullpen, and, and if Michael Penn was gone, Michael uh, Paul was gone, sorry, that we would see the end of Dan Beebe, but no, he is still standing strong tonight. Absolutely. Dan Beebe looking like Johan Santana when he threw his no-hitter back in 2010. Over 134 pitches for Santana in that outing. Beebe, after this inning, could be up around that number. But it's not a no-hitter for Beebe tonight. It's actually been quite the contested affair. Six hits allowed, four extra bases. But Beebe has navigated the damage, limited it to just one run. And he deals two balls to start things off here. Bumbo, two for three on the day, was finally retired last time on the strikeout. And that one misses inside. 3-0. Dan Beebe hasn't walked a batter tonight. He doesn't want to start now. 
And that one pours in for a strike. Strike definitely offering him some reassurance. Absolutely, trying to maintain that rhythm after over 120 pitches can be a very difficult thing to do. And he won't chase the outside pitch. That's the pitch that Combo struck out on his last time, but refuses to wave at it here. So, leadoff man on for, for 10, the Spartans. That is never good. And now Bottenfield taking a jaunt out towards the mound. Thank you, coach. Will he pull the plug on BB here? And he does take the ball from BB here. Selfish Faithful giving him the applause that he deserves. 123 pitches in the effort. And it's Nick Adams coming in for the Sailfish. We'll be back with some info on him after this quick break. New pitcher, number 19, Nick Adams. What does it mean to be a PBA? Still want to know more? That's what it means to be a PBA student athlete. Back to the Sailfish Sports Network. We're in the top of the ninth. Tampa's got a man on here. And Dan Beebe was just pulled from the game. So we got Nick Adams now looking to shove in the rest of this one. His fourth appearance of the year. What do you have on him, Will? Well, he, he's got a bit of higher ERA than uh, Dan Beebe has. He's got a 3.38 ERA. He's got a whip of 1.13. And he struck out about 13 people. He's played eight innings. So. I'd say a suitable replacement. I feel like he's definitely going to try to carry the legacy that Dan Beebe has laid out tonight. Absolutely. You don't want to squander that legacy down the end here. Opponents are only batting 200 against Nick Adams, and he's a lefty, so we'll see how that plays in after Dan Beebe, the righty, went every pitch up to this point, 123 of them. Nick Adams pitches to contact. He's never going to overpower you, but he's got good off speed. He's got good breaking stuff, and he has a solid defense behind him to rely on. So let's see what happens. Combo down at first base. Saladino at the plate. First offering from Nick Adams, and it's a bunt push towards first. Fielded in foul territory, so it's actually Cadenas pinch hitting for Saladino. Saladino went 0 for 3 on the day, so Joe Urso pulls the plug on him, goes with Cadenas in, instead, perhaps a bunt specialist. and a look over at first base. <laughs> oh, 
and one nobody down. And bunt and a miss. Cadenas not able to lay it down, so 0-2. Oh That's definitely not what he was looking for, especially when they get down to this, this ninth inning. All the Sailfish have to do is score one point, and the game is over, so Tampa's definitely going to try to increase their score in this inning. Absolutely. All he wants to do is move that runner into scoring position, but so far he's been unable to do it. Now most likely set to swing the bat here, but Figueroa is not convinced, still charging in at third. And Cadenas is set to swing on that last pitch, but Nick Adams leaves it well high. He can't afford to waste a couple here. And by a couple, I mean literally two. You don't want to get to a full count. And that one popped up on the infield. Another opportunity for Machado. And he puts it away, so... Cadenas not effective in moving the runner. Catcher number 27, Danny Gutcher. Now Gutcher gets his first look at Nick Adams. Gutcher reached on an error his last time. And that one's hit through the hole. Delayed reaction from Casa Leggio, not able to get to that one. So, first and second for Tampa here. One down in the top of the ninth. This is a situation eight, the Selfish have been in multiple times so far in this game, and they seem to find a way out of them every time, but Will Tampa be able to get it done this time? You can definitely tell Combo wanted to keep running. He wanted to try to get the third base so he could be in scoring range, but he had to stop himself very quickly there. Another bunt shown from Lala, but he takes outside. Fifth plate appearance for Lala on the day. Singled his last time. Lala batting above 330. And showing bunt, drags it down towards first. Should be effective, Machado gets over, and he's not in time. Machado doesn't get there in time. And now a nightmare scenario for the Sailfish has unfolded, base is loaded now. Lala beats out the drag bunt. And that is such an impactful play. The Sailfish are definitely starting to sweat now as they have bases loaded here. All they need to do is get one thing in. Take a look. Very close play at first. Very, very close. If we could go frame by frame. Come on, two, let's go. Coach Bottenfield came out to say his piece, but that was a bang, bang play at first base. Very hard to tell what the correct call was. And now Bonfield making another move out towards the mound. Bonfield potentially gonna go with another relief pitcher here. Takes the ball from Adams. And we're gonna take another break during the pitching change. We'll be back in the top of the ninth on the Sailfish Sports Network. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com.
Yes, exactly. <clears throat> However, there are multiple possibilities for the Sailfish to get out of this inning. Absolutely, anywhere is an out. So as long as, as long as he can throw good pitches, which I believe he can, he can definitely help the Sailfish pull out a victory tonight. Earhart takes high for strike one. Middle infielders at double play depth, then the corners in. Ground ball to a corner infielder means a throw home. There's a force play at home in effect with the bases loaded. And that one in there for strike. Seymour bends it in with the breaking ball, evens the count at one and one. Lala, Gutcher, and Combo are your men on first, second, and third base, respectively. Housen takes a quick run out to the mound to talk things over with Chris Seymour. Crucial pitch here from Seymour. Bounces backhanded by Hausen. Risky play, but trusting his abilities back there is Hausen. If that ball gets past, that's at least one run across the plate. There are only a couple ways the Sailfish can get out of this inning, but there are a million ways that Tampa can score right now. And Seymour misses again outside. Three and one. Pressure is definitely on the line. You can definitely tell, but he's definitely going to try to keep his cool for this next pitch. He has to. The Sailfish rely on him to keep his cool here. And that one misses outside, so Seymour walks in a run, and Tampa now leads two to one. Possibly one of the worst case scenarios there. No out recorded and a run crosses the plate. Seymour not out of the woods yet. Finds the zone on that pitch. Urso, 0 for 3 on the day, was also hit by a pitch. Corners remain in for the Sailfish. And that one sits high and outside. Seymour, one of the best pitchers last year for the Sailfish. Struggling so far in the early season. And that breaking ball slipped a little bit. Sits too far inside. And Seymour finds the zone, gets the call on the outside pitch, runs the count full, or rather two and two. One down, Seymour would love a strikeout here. and gets the bat on it, pops it up. Another pop-up opportunity for Machado, grabs it for the second out. So, two down now. That reduces the number of ways that Tampa can score. But now, prime opportunity for Nunez. 0 for 4 on the day, struck out his last time. And Nunez watches high and outside. 
Nunez in the cleanup position. He's got a big opportunity to get some big RBIs here. And Nunez swings, lifts it along the left field line, tailing, and that'll go out of play. That was Texel giving chase over there. Count evens at one and one. Coming into the night, was batting 429 over 35 at bats. But Sailfish pitching has quieted his bat so far. Seymour looking to continue that trend. The 2 1 offering. It's hit out towards left field once again, drifting into foul ground. Is anybody going to get there? No, nobody gets there. Figueroa was the closest man to it. That ball tailing away from him. Housen out for another visit. Talking strategy with his pitcher. Chris Seymour, 6'2", senior out of Boynton Beach. Just a little bit south of here. Also did some time at Florida Gulf Coast University. But now he's here on the Atlantic Coast. Finds himself in a position to get out of this inning. Two and two, two outs, top of the ninth. and fought off the other way once again. Nunez battling, showing why he's got that 429 batting average. Nunez only four strikeouts on the year. Seymour would love to make it five. And that was fouled straight back. Is obviously under a lot of pressure not to be the one that will send, send the, uh, the Spartans back to the dugout and give uh, the Sailfish a chance to score. Well, think about this, Will. All of the pressure is on Seymour right now. Tampa has already taken the lead. Nunez just has an opportunity to add on here. Pressure is totally on Seymour here. sits outside and high, so another full count. Selfish can't afford to dig this hole any deeper. They've still got three outs to work with on the offensive end, but Chris Seymour has to put this inning to bed right now. Merry-go-round will be in motion. And that one's launched out towards center field. Ferranda giving chase, finds it in the gap, goes down to one knee, makes the play, and the damage is limited here. Palm Beach Atlantic coming to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Three outs to work with. We'll be right back. What does it mean to be a Still want to know more? That's what it means to be a PBA student athlete.
Anderson back to the mound for Tampa as they look to close things out. Chris Seymour walked in a run, and that's the difference in this game now. Bottom of the ninth at Jake Rubin Park. The Sailfish have three outs to work with. Sailfish are definitely under pressure right now. They are down by one in the bottom of the ninth. They definitely have a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Number six. But as a professional baseball player, you should be able to just zone out all that pressure, just live in the moment, focus on hitting the ball, and that's exactly what Texel's gonna go to work in the box to do. He's already got a hit on the day. And he takes that one inside, good look. Texel and then back to the top with Warren and Machado. And that one finds the outside corner. Nelson, very simple motion, but you can see that ball coming in with a high rate of velocity. And Texel takes an outside pitch for a strike. One and two now. And he waves at the outside pitch. And that's one down for the Sailfish. Matty Warren, the next in line for the fish. One for three on the day. And Warren takes inside. Warren in the DH spot tonight. Usually patrols center field. And he taps that one out towards second base. Should be handled, and it is. Earhart puts it away. Second baseman. And quickly Nelson gets two and now Machado represents the last opportunity for the Sailfish in this one. Ferranda would be next if Machado can keep it alive here. on the outside pitch. Man, that one fouled off. And now the Sailfish down to their final strike. You can see Nelson giving 100% on the velocity right now. Machado barely able to foul off that pitch and fouls it in the box to stay alive, does Machado. He's trying to stay alive for as long as possible. He really wants to put all his effort in for his team. He's got quite a hill to climb here. And he hits it towards the middle. It's gonna squeak through for a base hit. So Machado keeps things alive here, gets his first hit of the day. Those little shots like that are what's gonna save the Sailfish tonight. Absolutely, tying run on base now. And Matt Veranda looking for his first hit of the day. And he taps that one out towards second. Goes the short route, gets the force at second base, and that puts the game to bed here. Tampa takes the victory two to one. But you gotta admit though, the fact that the Celtics are able to hold their ground as number four to rank team in the country is absolutely impressive. Phenomenal from the Sailfish, honestly. You can take many things away from this game. 
Sailfish went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fourth best team in the nation. And they've got two more cracks at them. Sailfish proving tonight that they are not a fluke and they can hang in with the best in the SSC. However, their losing streak to Tampa extends to nine consecutive games. And they still haven't won since 2019, but they'll go back to work tomorrow. Two games on the schedule tomorrow. 12 p.m. start for the first game. I'll be here with you folks on the call. Palm Beach Atlantic. Worked behind the efforts of Dan Beebe tonight, but he will get the no decision. The loss will go to Chris Seymour. And thank you very much, folks, for tuning in tonight. For myself, Caleb Dean, and Will Church alongside me and our entire production crew, O'Neill Spencer, Cade Chumsland, and Andrew Spell on the director's board. We thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great Friday evening.